When you use a remote control to change channels on your TV, your remote is using light waves. But this light is beyond the visible spectrum of light you can see. Back in 1800, William Herschel conducted an experiment measuring the temperature changes between the colors of the spectrum, plus one measurement beyond visible red. When that thermometer registered a temperature warmer than all the other colors, Herschel had discovered another region of the electromagnetic spectrum, infrared light. This region consists of short wavelengths around 760 nanometers to longer wavelengths about 1 million nanometers or about 1,000 micrometers in length. We can sense some of this infrared energy as heat. Some objects are so hot they also emit visible light, such as a fire. Other objects, such as humans, are not as hot and only emit infrared waves. We cannot see these infrared waves with our eyes alone. However, instruments that can sense infrared energy, such as night vision goggles or infrared cameras, allow us to see these infrared waves from warm objects like humans and animals. Infrared energy can also reveal objects in the universe that cannot be seen with optical telescopes. Infrared waves have longer wavelengths than visible light and can pass through dense regions of gas and dust with lower scattering and absorption. When you look up at the constellation Orion, you see only the visible light. But NASA's Spitzer telescope was able to detect nearly 2,300 planet-forming disks in the Orion Nebula by sensing the infrared glow of their warm dust. Each disk has the potential to form planets and its own solar system. Incoming ultraviolet, visible, and a limited portion of infrared energy, together sometimes called shortwave radiation, from the sun drives our Earth system. Some of this radiation is reflected off of clouds and some is absorbed in the atmosphere. Larger aerosol particles in the atmosphere interact with and absorb some of the radiation causing the atmosphere to warm. The heat generated by this absorption is emitted as long-wave infrared radiation, some of which radiates out to space. The solar radiation that does pass through Earth's atmosphere is either reflected off snow, ice, or other surfaces, or is absorbed by the Earth's surface. This absorption of radiation warms the Earth's surface, and this heat is emitted as long-wave radiation into the atmosphere, which allows only a small amount to radiate out to space. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, such as water vapor and carbon dioxide, absorb most of this emitted long-wave infrared radiation, and this absorption heats the lower atmosphere. In turn, the warmed atmosphere emits long-wave radiation, some of which radiates towards the Earth's surface, keeping our planet warm and generally comfortable. The energy entering, energy reflected, energy absorbed, and energy emitted by the Earth system constitutes the components of the Earth radiation budget. A budget that's out of balance can cause the temperature of the atmosphere to increase and eventually affect our climate. For scientists to understand climate, they must also determine what drives the changes within the Earth's radiation budget. The Ceres instrument aboard NASA's Aqua and Terra satellites can measure the reflected shortwave and emitted longwave radiation into space accurately enough for scientists to determine the Earth's total radiation budget. Other NASA instruments monitor the changes in other aspects of the Earth's climate system, such as clouds, aerosol particles, or surface reflectivity, and scientists are examining their many interactions with the energy budget. A portion of solar radiation from the sun that is just beyond the visible spectrum is referred to as near-infrared. Scientists can study how this radiation reflects off the Earth's surface to understand changes in land cover, such as growth of cities or changes in vegetation. Our eyes perceive a leaf as green because wavelengths in the green region of the visible light spectrum are reflected while other visible wavelengths are absorbed. Yet the chlorophyll and the cell structure of the leaf are also reflecting near-infrared light, light we cannot see. This reflected near-infrared radiation can be sensed by satellites, allowing scientists to study vegetation from space. Using these data, scientists can identify some types of trees, can examine the health of forests, and can even monitor the health of vegetation, such as forests infested with pine beetles or crops affected by drought. Studying the emission and reflection of infrared waves helps us to understand the Earth system and its energy budget. Near-infrared data can also help scientists study land cover such as changes in snow, 
ice, forests, urbanization, and agriculture. Scientists are beginning to unlock the mysteries of cooler objects across the universe such as planets, cool stars, nebulae, and much more using infrared waves. All electromagnetic radiation is light. Visible light is the only part of the spectrum you can see. For all your life, your eyes have relied on this one narrow band of EM radiation to gather information about your world. Though our sun's visible light appears white, it is really the combined light of the individual rainbow colors with wavelengths ranging from violet at 380 nanometers to red at 700 nanometers. Before Isaac Newton's famed experiment in 1665, people thought that a prism somehow colored the sun's white light as it bent and spread a sunbeam. Newton disproved this idea by using two prisms. To show that white light is made up of the bands of colored light, Newton used a second prism to show that the bands of colored light combine to make white light again. Visible light contains important scientific clues that reveal hidden properties of objects throughout the universe. Minute gaps in energy at specific visible wavelengths can identify the physical condition and composition of stellar and interstellar matter. Human eyes aren't nearly sensitive enough to detect these faint peaks, but scientific instruments can. Scientists can learn the composition of an atmosphere by considering how atmospheric particles scatter visible light. Earth's atmosphere, for example, generally looks blue because it contains particles of nitrogen and oxygen which are just the right size to scatter energy with the wavelength of blue light. When the sun is low in the sky, however, light travels through more of the atmosphere and more blue light is scattered out of the beam of sunlight before it reaches your eyes. Only the longer red and yellow wavelengths are able to pass through, often creating breathtaking sunsets. When scientists look at the sky, they don't just see blue, they see clues about the chemical composition of our atmosphere. However, visible light reveals more than just composition. As objects grow hotter, they radiate energy with a shorter wavelength, changing color before our eyes. Watch a flame shift from yellow to blue as it is adjusted to burn hotter. In the same way, the color of stellar objects tells scientists much about their temperature. Our sun produces more yellow light than any other color because of its surface temperature. If the sun's surface were cooler, say 3000 degrees Celsius, it would look reddish, like the stars Antares and Betelgeuse. If the sun were hotter, say 12,000 degrees Celsius, it would look blue, like the star Rigel. Like all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, visible light data can also help scientists study changes on Earth such as assessing damage from a volcanic eruption. This NASA E01 image combines both visible and infrared data to distinguish between snow and volcanic ash and to see vegetation more clearly. Since 1972, images from NASA's Landsat satellite have combined visible and infrared data to allow scientists to study changes in cities, neighborhoods, forests, and farms over time. Visible light images taken by NASA's Mars landers have shown us what it would look like to stand on another planet. They have expanded our minds, our imagination, and our understanding. NASA instruments can do more than passively sense radiation. They can also actively send out electromagnetic waves to map topography. The Mars Orbiting Laser Altimeter sends a laser pulse to the surface of the planet, and sensors measure the amount of time it takes for this laser signal to return. The elapsed time allows the calculation of the distance from the satellite to the surface. As the spacecraft flies above hills, valleys, craters, and other surface features, the return time varies and provides a topographic map of the planet's surface. Back in Earth orbit, NASA's ICESAT mission uses the same technique to collect data about the elevation of the polar ice sheets to help monitor changes in the amount of water stored as ice on our planet. Laser altimeters can also make unique measurements of the heights of clouds, the top of the vegetation canopy of forests, and can see the distribution of aerosols from sources such as dust storms and forest fires. Finally, visible light helps us to explore the far reaches of the universe that humans could not hope to reach physically. Using visible light, 
the Hubble Space Telescope has created countless images that spark our imagination, inflame our curiosity, and increase our understanding of the universe. Swirling spiral arms of galaxy M33 can be seen in visible light, but the true extent of these spiral arms are revealed in ultraviolet light. Just as a dog can hear a whistle just outside the range of human hearing, bugs can see light just outside the range our eyes can see. A bug zapper emits this ultraviolet light to attract insects. Johann Ritter conducted an experiment in 1801 to find out what, if any, electromagnetic waves are beyond violet. Ritter knew that photographic paper would turn black more rapidly in blue light than in red light. So he tried exposing the paper beyond the violet end of the visible spectrum. Sure enough, the paper turned black, proving the existence of light beyond violet, ultraviolet rays. These ultraviolet rays, or UV radiation, vary in wavelength from 400 nanometers to 10 nanometers and can be subdivided into three regions, UVA, UVB, and UVC. Visible light from the sun passes through the atmosphere and reaches the Earth's surface. UVA, long wave ultraviolet, is the closest to visible light. Most UVA also reaches the surface, but shorter wavelengths, called UVB, are the harmful rays that cause sunburn. Fortunately, about 95% of these harmful UVB rays are absorbed by ozone in the Earth's atmosphere. UVC rays are the shortest and most harmful and are almost completely absorbed by our atmosphere. The ozone monitoring instrument aboard NASA's Aura satellite detects ultraviolet radiation to help scientists study and monitor the chemistry of our atmosphere, including UV absorbing ozone. While atmospheric protection from harmful UV radiation is good for humans, it complicates the study of naturally produced UV rays in the universe by scientists here on the Earth's surface. Young hot stars shine most of their light beyond the visible light spectrum at ultraviolet wavelengths. Scientists need telescopes in orbit above the Earth's UV absorbing atmosphere to find and study these UV bright regions of star formations in distant galaxies. New young stars in the spiral arms of galaxy M81 can be seen in this Galaxy Evolution Explorer Galax image from NASA. Chemical substances, both atoms and molecules, interact with UV light making this region particularly interesting to scientists. An ultraviolet instrument aboard Cassini has detected hydrogen, oxygen, water ice, and methane in the Saturn system. UV data have also revealed details of Saturn's aurorae. Scientists also use UV waves shining from distant stars to view permanently shadowed regions of lunar craters. The Lyman Alpha Mapping Project, or LAMP, instrument aboard NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter can use this faint star shine to look for possible water ice on the moon. Ultraviolet rays may be harmful to humans, but they are essential to studying the health of our planet's protective atmosphere and give us valuable clues to the formation and composition of distant celestial objects. <laughs>